good day everyone so welcome to my channel and this is chemical engineering thermodynamics blog season one and our uh, topic is heat effects of industrial reaction so we have uh, one problem in solving heat effects of a industrial reaction so the question is what is the maximum temperature that can be reached by the combustion of one mole of methane with 20% excess air? Both the methane and the air enter the burner at 25 degrees Celsius. So we are going to solve the maximum temperature after the combustion or the temperature of the product. So we have a combustion uh, reaction so we have methane plus oxygen so we we'll yield carbon dioxide plus water so if it is maximum temperature so there is no heat loss and the uh, delta H is equals to Q so this is the solution so we have to write first the equation of the combustion plus uh, the 20% excess air. So, the above equation, CH4 uh, plus 2O2. So, we yield carbon dioxide plus 2 water. So, with the addition of nitrogen gas. So, since nitrogen gas is in inert, so, the, the initial amount of the nitrogen gas in the inlet will be the same as in the outlet. Then, with 20% excess air, so we just multiply 1.2 times the number of total of oxygen in the inlet and the same as in the nitrogen gas, which is since nitrogen and oxygen is air. So, in the product part, so we have excess air of 20%, so 20 percent times the number of moles of the oxygen in the product then our basis for this question is one mole of uh, methane so the inlet will be one mole of methane then 2.4 mole of oxygen so that is uh, 2 plus 20 percent of the 2 moles of oxygen. Then, the same as 9.03 mole of N2 which is came from the 2.4 mole of oxygen times 79 over 21. Then, the outlet is 1 mole of carbon dioxide, 0 0.4 mole of oxygen gas which is the excess uh, oxygen. Then, we have 9.03 mole of nitrogen which is the same the inlet and the outlet so if we uh, balance the nitrogen so they are the same so it is inert so there is no reaction with nitrogen and the formation of two mole of water initially for our first uh, solution we have energy balance q plus shop work will is equals to the change in enthalpy plus the change of in kinetic energy plus the change in potential. So we have no shop work, no kinetic energy, and no potential energies. Our final uh, energy balance equation is Q is equals to the change in enthalpy. But at maximum temperature, Q is equals to zero, so delta H will be zero. So this will be the path of the reaction. Since the reaction or the initial is 25, so based from this path from 25 degrees, using the change in enthalpy of uh, standard enthalpy at 298, so they are the same temperature, so the product will be at 25, but in the formation of the combustion or biocombustion uh, plus the change in enthalpy of the product, the product will be 
at the temperature T out or that is the maximum after the combustion. So for our energy balance, so delta H is equals to delta standard enthalpy of reaction plus the uh, change in enthalpy of the product will be equals to zero. So our change in uh, standard enthalpy at 298, we have the summation of the number of moles times the standard heat of formation of each component. So we have product minus reactant. So 1 times negative 393.509. So that is uh, product minus reacta reactant. So that is came from this equation or combustion or uh, combustion reaction. So, the final answer for the standard enthalpy at 298 is equals to negative 802.625 kilojoule per mole. So, for the enthalpy of, uh, change in enthalpy of product, we have the summation of uh, the number of moles times the integral of CPDT, which is equals to the change in standard CP of enthalpy at uh, times the change in temperature. So, T2 will be the final output. Then, T1 is initial. So, since our output is, or our product is 1 mole of CO2, 0.4 mole of uh, 0.2 uh, oxygen gas, 9.03 mole N2, and 2 mole of water. So based from our uh, our equation of the change in product, we have R times the quantity of the change in A plus change in B over 2 times T1 times uh, that is tau plus 1 plus change in C over 3 times T1 squared quantity of tau squared plus tau plus 1 plus change, uh, change in D all over tau T1 squared times the quantity of T2 minus T1. So our equation for the change in A, B, and D, we have this equation that is from the table C.1 in Banes, or a chemical in introduction to chemical engineering by Smith, Banes, and Abbott. So, we have change in A, we have 43.471, then delta B, and delta D. So, after we are going to our, uh, solve for delta A, B, and D, so just substitute the value in the change in uh, enthalpy of the product. So, that will be our equation. Then, substitute to the energy balance equation, then it will be negative 802, 1,625 joule per mole plus 8.314 joule per mole, quantity 43.471 plus 9, uh, 9.502 times 10 to the negative 3 over 2 times 298, quantity tau plus 1 minus 0 0.645 times 10 to the 5 all over tau 298 squared times the quantity of T2 minus 298. So, after several substitution, so we have our final equation of T2 is equal to 298 plus 96,539 all over the quantity 44.887 plus 0.00475 T2 minus 216.437 all over or over T2. Then after this, we're going to use the iteration method. So this equation will solve by using the method of successive substitution. So since the final product is greater than 298, we just uh, simply uh, iterate by the initial T2 of greater than 
298. So, let's say 500 degree, uh, 500 Kelvin. So, after many uh, iterations, so the final answer is 2,066 Kelvin or 1,793 degrees Celsius. So, for our practice problem, what will happen to the outlet temperature if no excess air is used? So, you can solve it in your uh, seat. Then, you will chat me what is your final answer. So, thank you. And if you have question, just send it to the group chat. Thank you.